No. Um, and I do appreciate that you haven't been too nasty with me. <laughs> I figure we're old friends. I'm like, people were like, they're like, Courtney, you know, so, so, you know, Hunter can be kind of rough, you know, when he talks to people. And I'm like, all right, I think it'll be all right. <laughs> it'll be okay. <laughs> so I yeah. do appreciate that. I'm fine ostracizing people. I have a problem ostracizing people on the basis of certain characteristics. Okay. So it's not a, not a crust the board for no of course see, for I'm, me, I'm in favor of ostracizing say a neo-nazi if someone came out and was hailing hitler and talking about how jews are all ruining the world then i would be okay ostracizing that person because it's not an immutable characteristic to be a nazi or to not want to get the vaccine all right and can a business tell you tell someone who is a nazi that they can't shop at that store um could a business not, tell like, a open. nazi that they couldn't shop at the store like if they're if not, they're not openly harassing anybody, but that's just who they are. You know, they are a Nazi. They have these beliefs. They want to go in and buy a sandwich. Can a business tell them that they can't? Yes. And that's because businesses have the right to deny service to people so long as the denial of service is not a violation of an otherwise uh, pre-existing law like the civil rights law. This is why a business has the right to say, we're not going to make you the cake that says hail Hitler. But mm -hmm. and they're allowed to do that, but they're not really or I don't think they should be allowed to say we're not going to make you this cake because we don't like gay people because now you've crossed a line into this immutable characteristic is the reason behind my refusal to serve you. And then you get into yikesy territory. I don't think people should be kicked out of a store for being white or being black or any kind of immutable characteristic. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, it has then been several years. Um, I mean, I have two kids now too, so a lot has changed on, on that front. <laughs> well, um, congratulations on that, by the way, because like we really haven't. I think when your first was born, I want to say that we at least had sent some messages, but since then, I think we've mostly lost contact. Yeah, I think we've, uh, and that's why I was telling Chad, I'm like, we didn't have like a falling out or anything. We just kind of just went our separate ways, did our own thing, and kind of haven't just ha haven't reconnected in a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. you're probably also familiar that my politics have changed uh, pretty significantly. <laughs> and then, well, uh, did your politics... That you... Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to follow up with a quick question, too. Um, did your politics change? Have you... Because I don't remember talking politics with you much. I don't remember if you were like a, a conservative then or if you've kind of become more like uh, um, like thought out and, and, you know, set in certain beliefs or whatnot. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so we definitely used to talk about politics some. Um, you obviously had a much bigger role in all of that. Um, and I wasn't, you know, I had a Twitter back then. And I would love if somebody would go find my old tweets from back then so we can read them. But <laughs> um, we did talk about it sometimes. And I we had some similarities. I always was a little bit more on the libertarian um, approaching anarchist side of things. Mm -hmm. um, that has been since I was pretty young and then I think just as you get older you know you refine things and some people have bigger changes mine has not changed drastically there's some things I think that I've gotten a little bit softer on but overall similar political place to be in and then of course as you know the world changes around you you have to analyze you know what's going on like I know because Hunter I remember your I think it was your 18th birthday I'm pretty sure it was your 18th birthday that um Trump was I think talking about running then or was it your was it a different birthday maybe is it 20 it would have had to be yeah because I, I, I don't think we I don't think we were fr I don't think we'd met yet when I was only 18 or I would have or we would have just met when I was 18 or something like that so yeah it was probably closer to when I was 19 or 20 you well, know because I was you, 20 I, yeah wasn't 20 at the no because the... no, um I think uh because aren't we the same age? I'm 25. Are you 25 as well? Yes. Okay, because so no, I we worked together a long time ago, and that's for everybody. That's how we actually knew each other was from working together. Right. Um, I was 17. I was only 17 uh, when I worked there. So okay, we've known I each guess other. I would have been 18 then at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. All I remember is that we had your birthday party, and I remember because there's a friend, a picture of a friend uh, and I that we were wearing your MAGA hat, <laughs> you and your brother's MAGA hats, and we posted a picture. And Trump was definitely not president yet. Um, I want to say that um, it had to have been after the, you know, after primary had been at least underway a good bit. Because I think your birthday's in January, isn't it? No, my birthday was in is in um, November. Is it 
I almost think oh. what it was, I think I remember having people over or something. It may have even been like a party or something. I'm not sure if it was related to my birthday. I don't know. I, I remember what you're talking about, though. My memory is just yeah. not, not too great, um, especially but after extensive marijuana use last year. So <laughs> there's that, too. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I don't remember perfectly. But I do remember that. Yeah. Us all wearing the MAGA hats and, and taking the pictures and stuff. Um, yeah. Because yeah, so I was I definitely that- big into Trump then. That was when I was all like. I was like the big <laughs> Trump simp. Um, and right. now I like kind of, I, well, no, now I do really hate Trump. So it's funny how much has changed on, on my end of things. Um, I guess we yeah, can just well, jump right into the disagreement too. It, go ahead and say what you were going to say. Sorry, not, I'll kind of. No, it's just like my kind of idea of Trump and stuff is not what it was then. And that's why I think, you know, things you kind of evolve, you know, I happily voted for Trump the first time. Um, he wasn't my first pick in primary like a lot of people, but it was once Ben Carson dropped and then decided to support them. him. I was like, okay, you know what? You know, we've had too much of this you know, families that have been in politics for 30 years kind of a thing. It is time for us to move on. And Trump seemed like the outsider, you know, going to change things up. And that's why I was like, okay, cool. But not anymore. I, if it was, the election was happening today, that is not who I would support. So there have been some changes. Yeah, I was going to say that the biggest thing for me with Trump, not the biggest thing, but I mean, January 6th was obviously a nightmare, even if there's like, like, minute disagreements about like what happened or whatever like at the end of the day i think all of the right wing like the further right trump supporter types would probably have to admit that that was like at least terrible optics for them because that was a really that just fucked them completely um but for me it was also when trump started to like harp on locking people up for burning the american flag stuff like that which you said you're a libertarian too so i'm i'm sure that would kind of bother you as well it's like Wait, hold on. Like, you might find that disrespectful. I mean, my grandfather what is literally a veteran, so it is disrespectful, but yeah. people shouldn't be locked up for that. Like, holy fuck, because w- once you get there, I mean, now you're going to lock people up for disrespecting the state. That's a pretty scary place to be. So I right, think that, absolutely. I feel like we probably do disagree the most on, like, LGBT stuff. Um, and- I kind of doubt. Just because I, my views aren't that strong, I would say it's probably economics. Because I see that you lo- label yourself as like a socialist now, which that couldn't be further. Oh from. no, no, no! I'm I'm not. I'm a so I'm a social democrat. But no, no hard feelings. It's very easy to confuse social democrat <laughs> with a democratic socialist. So okay, all right. <laughs> Bernie Sanders was like a democratic socialist, which is just they want to move us towards socialism via democratic means, essentially. Um, and then I'm a social Democrat, which means that I am not a socialist. I'm still in favor of capitalism. I'm just in favor of stronger uh, social safety nets. So like I would prefer like a public health care option, um, more welfare, perhaps. Um, I mean, I would definitely prefer that there was some provision for people by the state. Yes. But um, ultimately, I would still be in favor of, of capitalism and, and the free market and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, just to, be, just to be clear, I'm not a socialist. OK, I'm not Antifa over here. And I haven't kept up on much of your content either. So I and I had only looked at things kind of briefly um, to see. But I figured it'd be cool to discuss what our differences are and, you know, yeah. how things have evolved since we were younger. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is I don't know if you saw my tweet responding to this this one, because this is what I was scrolling through your feed the other day because I like I said, I hadn't I didn't know you had like 30K on here and everything and you were picking up traction. Um but yeah, it was. I mainly like took issue with the 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 post, the fight bigotry. Ninety eight percent of straight men are unwilling to date trans women because of hatred. This has to change. Uh. Um, and my, I mean, my main thing was just that isn't a real meme. Like, it's not a real picture. So, like, trans rights right. campaign is is fake. That's not real. And um, that's why I responded to the original tweet from Jake Shields and showed that it was literally posted on 4chan with them talking about how they're going to spam it and try to make the trans people look bad. Um, but I mean, your point as far as like, if we told gay people they had to be open, right. Or, or like shit like that, that is, that would be yikes EAF. And there are definitely some people that would argue still that it's like transphobic if you wouldn't date a trans person or something. And I've always taken issue with that. I'm more though on the side of like, Um, like trans women are women kind of shit. Um, I usually am like in favor of like the, um, multi-gender bathrooms. 
Um, the sports thing, eh, not so much. I recognize there's biological differences. That's not going to change. Um, mm-hmm. But usually when it comes to the social elements, I'm, I'm definitely of like, I recognize like gender identity and, and sexual characteristics as being different things. I don't know where you stand on that, though. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't have anything, you know, against... Um, you know, if, you know, people have, you know, gender dysphoria and, you know, they choose to be transgender, um, that's not something that, you know, I would never be, you know, mean or wanting to bully someone like that. Um, they've obviously gone through a lot, you know, mm-hmm. you know, socially to even get to a point like that. Um, and even some of the people that I know, um, I don't have a lot because <laughs> I feel like there's not a lot that kind of share the same politics that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that have some a couple trans people that even follow me and I consider you know they're you know cool people and stuff right. um so I don't have any issue with that I also um am friend I'm very good friends with people that are close to Caitlyn Jenner as well okay. and you know that's you know that's fine it's you know I so the way that I look at a lot of stuff is that personally I am quite conservative um you know I you know I'm Christian I know that Hunter they're not anymore uh <laughs> I'm and like so that, rabidly not, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, but that keeps a lot of how I view. And so what I see as right for me, um, I don't expect other people to do the same. Mm. Like I said, I'm a libertarian. Like if you're off minding your own business and, you know, it's not hurting anybody else, like, mm. cool. Like, you're, you're, you're doing your thing. Like I, yeah. I can respect that. Um, and that's really respectable too, because there are a lot of especially in the conservative side of things that are like of the opinion that uh, Western civilization is heading towards degeneracy and they need to enact their policies to restrict uh, like trans people or, or um, trans um, treatment for, for like uh, trans kids or whatever. Um, and then of mm-hmm. course they get like really weird about like the whole pronoun issue too is, is like a ongoing thing. So. Right. Well, and so it's funny that you mentioned the tweet that you did, because actually that's not the tweet that I thought you were talking about. Oh, really? Um, I thought you were talking about, um, there was, I think I had quote tweeted something. It was about um, uh, the drag shows. It was about uh, family-friendly drag shows um, Hmm. that wasn't, and I came out against that, and I'm like, look, you know, I'm cool. As as adults, you can do whatever you want. It's consenting adults, you know. You're you're cool. You can do what you want, even if I don't agree with it. All right. But when you start bringing children into that, and especially if you're exposing children to sexual content, uh-huh. that's where I draw. That's you know, protecting kids is something that's very important, and I want to make sure that you know, as you know, we are catering to people that you know are expressing themselves differently. That we aren't compromising safety for anyone especially children who need protection of adults oh Um, i completely agree and i think that unfortunately a lot of people are of the opinion that like you can't be like loudly pro lgbt and then be loudly against inappropriate drag events for kids and i don't know Mm -hmm. why those things are more often than not kind of mushed together because i myself am loud and proud pro trans pro gay i argue about it all the time but I would also be the first one to say, no, if you're taking your child to a sexual drag event, like, fuck you, <laughs> get some better values. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You don't you don't expose your kids to sexual things. Not to mention, like, there's more to being LGBT than the sexual aspect of it. Like, that's why I talk so much about pronouns and identity and self-perception. And there's more than just the sexual side of things. So I, I think you could even make an argument that y- it's almost a pro-LGBT stance to oppose exposing kids to these sexual events because in a way you're kind of teaching them to associate that inappropriate type of behavior with LGBT stuff. And that's just not the case. Um, but I mean, the, the one thing though, too, like I'm, I looked through your Twitter a little bit. I was kind of like, Oh, I wonder if there's anything I'll see here that I sort of disagree with. (laughs) To be honest, when you said, um, you're voting for DeSantis, (laughs) make America, Florida. (laughs) Um, that's the thing is like I, I can I respect a lot that you are sort of you have your own personal beliefs, but you also recognize that like you can't legislate that and that people have a right to live their lives even if you disagree. But the thing is, is like DeSantis doesn't. He's not of that opinion. He he is consistently pushed forward anti-LGBT type uh, um, policies and whatnot. 
Um, I know the don't say gay bill thing was very cliche and everybody was acting like you're not going to be allowed to say that you're gay when you meant you're happy or some shit like that. But already now what we're seeing are districts within Florida that are actually outing gay kids to their parents and under the don't say gay thing. So that is, I think, a violation of their privacy, especially considering the fact that if the child is not doing something dangerous, like if they're like engaging in like sexual behavior or something, that should be told to the parents, obviously. But if they're like only comfortable coming out to a teacher, but maybe they're not so sure about their parents, maybe their parents are like really, they don't understand it, or maybe they're super religious and they kind of use that against it. I find it to be very yikesy that now they're required to alert the parents and out the child because of the DeSantis policy. Yeah, if I could address that a little bit. So um, as far as some of the in individual stories, you know, I'm obviously not, I'm, not, I'm probably not familiar with all of those. And, you know, that can be a lot of small things happening in different districts over, a, you know, pretty large in a pretty large state. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that the actual bill itself was addressing quite young children. I want to say it was from the ages of, was it five to seven or five to eight? It was, th that was the only part I believe that the bill actually applied to was children that were quite young. And they basically were saying like, we're not going to be teaching that. Right. Um, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, the yeah. thing is that, and a lot of people took issue with, because I talked about that a while back, and admittedly, I don't remember everything about it, but I do remember, you're right, it was only, like, for the younger ages where they were really, like, cracking down on it. Um, a lot of people took issue, though, with the, the sort of vague language that was not, I mean, since it wasn't concise, it allows for a lot of interpretation, um, and that's why... Like what I just referenced, the the schools outing the gay kids. This is in one of Florida's, I think, largest districts. But I know for sure that it's over 42,000 students attend this school district. And now they have adapted policies where if you come out to a teacher, they need to tell the parents. And I think that that's dangerous. And another thing I would say is like, well, as far as there's know? nothing. Well, just one more thing really quickly. Like, as far as there's nothing sexual being taught to children, a five-year-old can learn about gay people. Like, I genuinely think that's a good thing. Yeah, see, I would, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think there's so much stuff that people can learn about that there's just no reason to bring up, you know, oh, this is the concept of being gay, the concept of being straight. I don't think, I don't, I, I don't want to teach kids necessarily about being straight either that are five. Like, I think that they should be, but the thing you is, know, is learning. I see, I like, I understand where you're coming from there because it's like, why do we need to worry about that for kids? But the thing is, is that like the reason it's kind of weird is because gay people and LGBT in general, they're a minority, so they really are outside the norm. So what kids are exposed to on the norm is man, woman, mom and dad. I mean, I don't think anybody here would object to bringing your five year old to a wedding like that happens all the time. There's even five year olds that are the ring bearers, right? That is them in that context being exposed to heterosexuality. And I usually but, just think, like, if a kid is taught, like, hey, some people have a mommy and a daddy, and some people have two mommies, some people have two daddies, I don't really see the problem with that. And I, I get where you're coming from. I just think that that's something that can happen between the kids and the parents. I don't think it needs to be the school, because it's not going to be the school that's taking them to a wedding. It would be their parents. Well, and yeah, so but that's the parents... The, see, <sighs> Because the parents send their children to the school because, in a way, the parents are recognizing that they are not qualified to educate the students so or their children in, in certain regards. And that's another issue that I have is, like, I recognize, of course, there needs to be a line between, like, what is allowed to be taught and then when parents can object to it and, or just ref straight out refuse. But, like, when you have parents now that are unironically believing that gay and groomer are, like, the same things at this point – uh, and they're woefully uneducated on these subjects. I don't trust parents to give their their kids accurate information about gay people or LGBT people. And what's even worse is if they are, say, bigoted against gay people, maybe they're just not ignorant, but they're actually like bigoted. That's going to only lead to a worse world for everybody because we want people to be more accepting and more even you like you're okay with people living their lives the way they want to live them so long as it's consensual legal and not hurting anybody and i don't want to raise a generation of kids that are not okay with that because their parents taught them that like being gay is an abomination and you know if it's gay oh it's disgusting that's sinful or uh groomer and stuff like that i don't know 
that's just my my take on there though yeah no well and again if we're talking about high schoolers here i think that there maybe would be a little bit of a different conversation but if we're talking about kids that are i don't like i said i don't remember i think it's seven or eight and under I'm okay. I'm okay with us not including that in the curriculum. And I would go so far to say that a lot of parents don't necessarily send their kids to school just because they aren't qualified to teach. And I think there's certain things that maybe they don't know how to teach. Like if, you know, you know, math is something that they don't think, but for a lot of simple things, especially for, you know, these, you know, young elementary kids, like, you know, if you're an adult that knows how to read and write and, you know, do basic math, you probably could handle most of it. I would say that a lot of it, you know, why parents use schools is because you know they might be working Mm -hmm. they might have you know responsibilities and I think especially with COVID um, where a lot of kids are doing school from home a lot of parents have been able to see that oh like especially for you know small children that it's really not that hard and I mean I know you and I have you know the background of being homeschooled um, where we were people and the thing is I don't think that homeschooling is right for everybody and I am glad there are public schools um, but you know, just like anything else that we want to, you know, not push any certain agenda during school. It, you know, we wouldn't want to push, you know, Christianity during school. We wouldn't want to press, you know, but um, a, you know, is I, so you know, any, you're it, right that we wouldn't want to like educate a student. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, just that we want schools to be neutral. Um, we want, ki- you know, kids from any background to be able to come there and receive an education and Inclu- to learn how to including read. Including gay people. And so it's yeah. almost, it's almost more of a push towards an agenda to try and prevent kids from learning about gay people than it would be to just advocate for age appropriate information being being taught to kids. The thing is, is that gay people existing, like that's not an agenda. And when people object to it or they're like, I don't want my kids learning about it. I mean, you and I would probably both laugh if some parents stood up and said, I object to my kid learning that the world is round because I'm a flat earther. Okay. Because we recognize mm-hmm. that that's a fact of reality is that the world is round and whether you believe it or not, tough because the world is round. Like you don't you don't just get to decide. Right. But the same thing kind of goes for gay people. Gay people exist. Even kids are gay sometimes. Um, and I mean, I guess they would be gay from the start or anything and they wouldn't realize they were gay till later. But you know what I mean? Um, and so I, I don't know why, like an age appropriate lesson or just information on gay people existing is a bad thing. Like what if, what if there's like a five-year-old, right? And then, um, they have their friends and and their other friend gets dropped off and they have two moms. Like Mm -hmm. the five-year-old might not understand that. They probably wouldn't. So why couldn't they learn that? Like, yeah, some kids have two moms. Like I've, even that, it's not like, let me explain what gay sex is like to me. (laughs) Like, obviously we're talking about like just the concept that gay people are real and they exist. Yeah, well, and I think that there's a big difference between answering a question that's asked versus having a day dedicated to, you know, kids learning that. That's that's where I don't think it's necessary. I don't care if a teacher, you know, if a kid asks a teacher and says, you know, you know, oh, you know, I have two moms because <laughs> kids blur out random stuff in school if you're around kids much, uh, which you obviously are. Yes, <laughs> you have some. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, I'm OK with the teacher being like, be like, yep, you do. And if a kid asks ask her a question and they're like, oh, why why do they have two moms? And, you know, the teacher could probably just say, oh, because that's what they decided to do and then move on. <laughs> like, it's not that I don't think they could ever, like, answer something. I just don't think it's something that needs to be included in a lesson. Um, I mean, if you're saying, and, like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't want to dedicate. Other problem. When you're talking about talking about gay people as, like, a concept to children, mm-hmm. um, it's not that. It's, I'm worried how it would come across. <laughs> I'm worried how the actual conversation and what content would end up being included. Um, because obviously, even like regular like sex ed and things like that doesn't happen until, you know, a much later time. Even in schools where they're, you know, I guess a little bit more progressive. I really don't know of that happening, at least not until at least fourth or fifth grade. Um, and a lot of times it well, can I, be even a little. And I, well, I, um, yeah, and I w- I'm not advocating for like five-year-olds to learn sex ed. I mean, obviously sex ed is just that it's education on sex specifically. And that's why it's for an older age. But, and also just to clarify, like, I wouldn't want like a whole day dedicated to like, this is what it's gay. Yeah. 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 Or whatever. 
It's more just that hypothetically, if there were a lesson that were age appropriate, that didn't have anything that was um, sexual or anything creepy or anything, if it was literally just giving children facts about the mm -hmm. fact that there are gay people and families are different. Maybe they could do a lesson on like different families, right? And some people have two moms, some people have two dads, and this is what that means. Here's what it means to be gay. Like maybe, you know, sometimes a man loves another man. Um, and also sometimes a man loves a woman and sometimes two women love each other. And there are different types of families. Even like stuff like that, a five-year-old could grasp that pretty easily. There's nothing sexual about it. And again, it's a fact of reality. So, I mean, all worry about like what if it was inappropriate or something, putting that aside, if we're able to just kind of agree on the hypothetical that the age would be or that the lesson would be age appropriate, I genuinely think it would actually be a... a good thing, like not just neutral, like I would advocate for kids at that age to learn age appropriate lessons that gay people exist. Right. And if I was on the school board and, you know, I was having to make a decision about that, I would vote no. You know, that's. But why? You know, but why? Like, because kids already know about straight people. They they have their mom and dad. They've gone to weddings, most likely, or at least that. I mean, come on, how many four and five year olds have seen their mommy and daddy kiss even like they're already exposed to that kind of stuff. So I don't know what's the harm. Isn't there more harm with depriving well, them from that information than there would be delivering it to them? No. And I also want to bring up that in your, that you gave a hypothetical scenario. And the fact of the matter is, you know, when you get, you know, teachers into the school, and there's a lot of really wonderful teachers out there. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of friends who are teachers. But we also have seen, you know, that be abused, where there are teachers that are, you know, showing children books that are, they're meant for a young age. It's not that. Um, but there's a lot of content in there that I think does go too far. And so I would just be sure. too concerned about the slippery slope. Um, but you know the slippery uh, slope is, it's called a logical fallacy because it is literally just that. It's fallacious to assume that if we go from age appropriate lessons about gay people that that means sooner than later we're suddenly going to have teachers exposing students to books depicting genitalia or something like i think what we're, we're having the the uh like we're sort of talking past each other here is that you're arguing against more specific examples and there have been examples where there have been things taught to children both in sex ed that has nothing to do with gay people or lessons about gay people that are inappropriate and that I would say that is bad and you shouldn't do that. That's fucked up. But I'm kind of arguing more about the principle of it, not the specific example. So like the principle, this is why I'm delivering the hypothetical is the principle is should kids or should kids not around the age of five have an understanding and be taught in an age appropriate manner that gay people exist and that there are different types of families. I don't know why that would be a problem. So my, I guess my response to that is that I think that that's something that should be the responsibility of parents because the way that each parent might want to explain that given what their worldviews are, because we know that that's people differ. Yeah, but no, that's, that's literally the exact problem that I have is this is just the same. You can make the identical argument to, well, some parents are flat earthers because they follow the Bible. They believe genuinely that there's four corners of the earth, which I believe is a biblical thing. And that's what they follow, and they don't want their kids to learn about the, f the the round earth because they everybody's different. Everybody has their own ideas. You're right, but there are some things that I don't think parents should actually get a, a big say in. Like, if they're going to step out and say, hmm? I think that social issues are different. Like, this, you know, everything that's going on with, you know, the LGBTQ uh, community right now, it, it's a social issue, just like, you know, uh, you know, things surrounding abortion and things like that. There are some hot topic issues. Yes, that... it's a social issue, but it's also a factual social issue. Like it is a fact that gay people exist. It is a mm -hmm. fact that there is a genetic basis behind it. It is a fact that people do not choose to be gay. So these are all facts that you're right that it's a social issue as far as like LGBT equality and stuff like that. But it is a factual issue fact, <laughs> a factual fact that that gay people are, are real. So 
that's the thing is like, I understand some parents might have a problem with it. You're right. But I don't care because they're wrong. And by depriving their kids of learning about things, you are raising a generation of children that are going to be less accepting of other lifestyles. And that's going to just lead to a net harm because there are also people who might say, I don't want my kid to learn about gay people because that doesn't really go, you know, align with my beliefs. And I also don't want kids to learn about X, Y, Z. Maybe they put something else in that you and I both are completely fine with. But to them, it really violates their religious belief, because I know for some Christians, they're a lot more fundamentalist than others. At one point, we have to say, like, you're wrong and too bad if you don't like it. This is a fact and your feelings can't change it. Right. And I and I think that there is a whole sp- you know, spectrum of things that parents don't all ag- agree on. And for me, like I said, if, if it were me making the vote, I don't I don't think that that's something that needs to be in there. I think that, you know, letting kids be exposed to certain things naturally as they come up in the world makes more sense. Um, kind of like, you know, if, you know, a kid is a friends with another kid and, you know, they do have, you know, two parents that are the same gender or have, you know, an interesting family structure, as you brought up. Um, I think that that would be the time. And just to but let what if things they're happen- exposed to that. And the first thing they say is like, how do you have um, why do you have two mommies? That's fucking weird. Well, they probably hopefully wouldn't be using the F word. But if they were like, why do you have two mommies? That's weird AF. Like, what? Why don't you have a mommy and daddy like every uh, everyone else? You're not very normal or like you run the risk then of them having a, a vitriolic and nasty response purely because they just don't understand. I mean, you've seen kids. Sometimes they'll say things that are like totally like, whoa, yikes, don't say that. But they just don't understand. So you're right well, that like ideally, I, yeah, it would come up in like some natural context where they could kind of have a good conversation and it was all all great or whatever. But school exists to educate students on the world. And it is a fact of the world that gay people are real. It doesn't do any harm to teach kids that gay people are real. I think it's a higher likelihood that it would do harm to deprive them of that information because you run the risk of them being literally unaccepting and possibly even engaging like bullying level behavior. So I don't like, why would you vote against this then? So what you're explaining to me, it does. I really don't think it's it would hurt the kids that didn't learn about it. I think more of who you're trying to protect is you know, maybe children of gay couples to make sure that they aren't, you know, ostracized or, you know, made to look different. Partially, yes. But I also think that just them having a general understanding, like a five-year-old already has the understanding that a boy and a girl get married when they are grownups because their mommy and daddy are married or something like that. But Mm -hmm. when we're talking about gay people, it is not as normal, obviously, like it just doesn't happen as much because clearly gay people are not like the norm, quote unquote. But that's more of the reason why they should be taught it then, because it's Mm -hmm. less likely that they're going to be exposed to that in a natural and healthy way. It's less likely that that would even occur. So I don't this is the thing is like, I understand that you're saying like the parents should kind of have the say here. But why? I don't understand why you're in favor of it this this direction, I guess. (laughs) don't think it's something that is the school's responsibility to teach. Like, I don't want to have a lesson that's about straight parents either. Why? Because there's, it's unnecessary for children. It's like with all the situations that you're bringing up, at least to me, and I'm okay with the fact that we disagree on it. You know, that's, (laughs) that's fine. That's why we can have, you know, you know, good discussions, but there's so many things that are important for children of that age to learn. And I, I don't think that that's one of them. I don't think that that's one of the fundamental, most important things, um, you know, and but it doesn't the background need to be, it doesn't need to be like, it doesn't need to be like the fundamental biggest thing they learn. But I mean, kids at that age are learning a billion things all the time. They're they're learning right. things from the media they watch. They're learning things at school. They're learning things from social interactions from their parents. One of those things that they should learn is that gay people exist. This is just back to like the acceptance of minorities, even more broadly speaking. I feel like, honestly, a lesson that was like different types of families and you talked about interracial couples, you talk about straight couples, you talk about gay couples, All of that can take place without it being inappropriate or sexual. It doesn't have to be like the main focus of the rest of their childhood or something. 
but I don't see why you keep saying like, I'm not really in favor of it and I get it, but I don't understand why. Well, and so you brought up a good point just now um, about, you know, interracial couples. I don't think it should be pointed out to children that are five that there are racial differences between people either. But they can see it with their own eyes. Well, right. So, for Just example, like I remember when um, I, I, I once saw a really small child. Um, actually, my my <laughs> she she would get so mad if I if I if she knew I was saying this. But my younger sister, actually, when she was very, very little, um, was at I think she was at like Sunday school or something. Um, and she had one of those like yikes AF reactions to a black kid. And it was like, obviously now she would never do something like that. And she, nor, and she, like I said, would probably be very angry. I mean, if she knew I was even saying this, but she was like telling like my brother, she was like, don't touch him. He'll get black on you. <laughs> that's what she said. So I'm like, uh, yikes. <laughs> Holy fuck. Whoa. So that's the thing is you then run the risk of the lack of education leading to a negative outcome. And then you've. I mean, thankfully, in that case, nothing really came from it. It was just like a yikesy comment and forgot about it. But it, you also run the risk of people who are minorities feeling ostracized or isolated. And there already is a huge amount of discrimination socially against LGBT people um, that, yeah, I just feel like overall the education aspect is is so crucial. I don't, yeah, I don't so know why. Like if they're like, here are different types of couples, I, I, I'm not seeing the problem. <laughs> Yeah, so let me explain a little bit of the background of where I come from and why, for me, I, I don't think it's something that's necessary. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, you know, I was homeschooled, but, you know, I went, you know, out and about in the world enough. Um, and when we went to church, like, we had all sorts of different, um, you know, people that were in our church, you know, different ethnic backgrounds and things like that. And that was something I absolutely was exposed to. And at least for me growing up, I am so glad that nobody, like when I was a, like a young kid, ever made a big deal about racial differences. Because the way I was taught is that, you know, you judge somebody based on their actions. You know, are they kind? You know, do they treat people well? And that you shouldn't even look at, you know, what they look like and treat them one way or another because of but that. They, I Well, I um, agree with that. In, again, overall, that principle. Oh, Sorry. Hold on. Sorry, go ahead. Hold on. Um, and so, and I remember one of the earliest, like, things that I ever remember learning anything uh, about there being racial differences or anything. It was the Sunday school song, which you, I don't know if you might you still remember it, but it was like red and yellow, black and white. We are precious in God's sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. And that was the first time I'd been considered. And I didn't know that, you know, people were considered, you know, African American or um, Asian or I, that none of that had happened yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that. For me, at least growing up, it was so nice. And so, like, I didn't even realize that racism was a thing. And, like, so it wasn't even a concept in my brain to treat someone differently. I'm going to say um, something incredibly beta, because I soy boy cuck in a minute. <laughs> uh, but, and so just given my own personal, uh, you know, what, you know, how I grew up like that, mm -hmm. I would like the world was a place where, you know, kids, you know, have, you know, friends that are, you know, could be very different from them. Yeah, and they, they don't think just on being kids and playing and, you know, if somebody's nice and they want to be friends with them, that that's what matters and not all this other stuff that we as adults end up dealing with. So and so I'm, it's just a matter of I gotta for get in here with my soy. I'm gonna have my soy moment here. Um, cause this, I'm, I'm about to soy out, so I'm sorry, but that, is, that really is coming from a place of privilege because, it is the norm in our society that white, white people, like that they're the majority, you're most exposed to white people. And so you not really needing to think about it is one of those sort of benefits that are oftentimes afforded to white people that are just not afforded to black people. Like, I, I mean, if we want to talk about personal experiences, there are several different personal experiences of young black kids who've had the talk with their parents about about racism, about possible mm -hmm. prejudice against them and that some people might treat them badly because of the way they look. And so, like, I, you're right. In an ideal society, nobody would see race. It would literally be a colorblind society. Everybody would just live their life and they'd all just get along or, you know, they'd base 
on who they want to hang out with based on how that person is, not the color of their skin. But that's not the world we live in right now. And so for children to be exposed to the fact that some people look different from you, some people are different colors from you, that doesn't mean that they're bad or weird or anything else. Everybody's different and unique. So we should treat everybody with respect and be kind. And just if somebody looks different doesn't mean really much of anything. Like even a lesson like that, I'm not saying you sit a kid down and be like, this is what it means to be gay. This genetic back, blah, blah, blah. Or like, this is what it means to be black. So African-Americans and blah, like, but I mean, how many times have kids said something racist by accident? What what you said about the, you know, that are different. I think that that is a good, a good lesson. I actually, I haven't told many people about this, but I'm actually in the process of writing a book, mm -hmm. um, a children's book that would actually fall along the lines of that is, uh, it's, uh, well, I don't want to give too much away since uh, it's still in the process, but basically explaining that, you know, it's beautiful that we live in a world where people are different and it makes the world richer because of it, yeah. um, that we have our differences. That's not uh, anything that I take issue with at all. And I think that is good. Um, but and I, I also have that. where, um, for instance, um, like where, where my parents live, I, they had this program that it was, um, meant to be like a, a young black scholars program and it was like a math program that was only kids that were african-american were invited to come participate in that hmm. um and this is something for quite young children and i just don't think that schools promoting anything that splits kids apart due to racial backgrounds or you know, any kind of, you know, it could be economic differences. I don't think that that's a good thing. Well, and I, I don't think either, that but this is, this is, I feel like we keep going well, back to the same problem is, is you're giving an example of where something takes place that is bad. Yeah. Whenever that's right. still, that shit still happens. It's like, this is the black only dorm or there was something like that. It's like, what? Well, and we can't and just, so point, we're not going to make woke segregation a thing. Okay. Like it just pointing well, out differences though. Sorry, I'm cutting sorry. you off, but I, well, I was just going to say really quickly pointing out differences and then following it up with, yes, you are different, but that doesn't mean that anyone is lesser than each other because right. maybe one person is white and one person is black, but maybe you have a friend who wears glasses and you don't wear glasses. Like you don't have to harp on just the race thing or split kids up or anything, but right. them being taught that I think is good. And again, I'm glad that you kind of were able to live a childhood where you didn't think much about race. I was the same way, but that is literally a form of privilege because black kids do not experience that the same way. And there are also some kids who are not taught the colorblind way of viewing things. I mean, my step grandpa, for example, is fucking racist. And he had said racist stuff when my dad was growing up and like mm -hmm. shit like that. Th someone in chat made a great point. Like no one's born a racist. They're taught to be racist. And so Absolutely. I feel like just explaining right off the bat, almost nip it in the bud, right? Hey, yeah, of course there's a difference. A kid is not going to, to walk up and not see a difference between a white person and a black person, but then explaining that that doesn't mean anything. No, they're, they're just, they're a person just like you are. They have feelings and they love their mom and dad just like you do. Um, like, is that not like a pretty obvious benefit? Well, and I think it goes back <laughs> to you saying that I'm examples. What I'm giving are examples of times that I've seen something that probably did have good intentions go wrong. Um, and but this is why I'm saying you're giving examples, but I'm trying to argue the principle of it. Well, I think I, I don't I don't understand arguing principles, though, because we live in the real world. And so we can argue. I, I get into this with anyone that wants to talk about politics. That there's a lot of things that in theory, it might sound good and, it, you know, maybe all things would work out. But I think that at least when I'm considering if there's something I support or I'm against, you know, I'm going to apply the people aspect to it, that people are very flawed. And any situation that you put a person into, there's going to be some, some ways that they screw stuff up, but there's uh, a, at least in, you know, you know, that I've seen. There's a difference and between... just. It's just because I'm worried that people that are setting up programs like that um, will make mistakes um, and maybe cause an undue harm. It, that's that's why I'm opposed. That's why. Well, and there's that a I couple don't things. There's a, I feel like you could 
make the same argument from not teaching it that maybe for you, you're kind of like, well, why do we need to focus on race? And I would be of that opinion too. When I was in kindergarten, one of my best friends at the time uh, was a black kid. And I never thought twice about it. It was just didn't, it just didn't matter. It was like, yeah, we look different. Who gives a fuck? That is the ideal world, but couldn't there be bad outcomes from not educating kids that people are going to be different? And just if they're different, isn't bad. And then secondly, the principal thing that I'm getting at is that it, there's difference between the idea, like the concept, and then implementing that concept. So of course, let's say it's like, hey, all kids can bring their own lunch. And then now there's an example of where someone brought like, I don't know, uh, like worms or some weird shit for their lunch. We wouldn't be arguing all day whether or not that was a good thing to bring worms to eat for lunch. The argument is ultimately would be about should kids be able to bring their own lunch? And so I feel like there are always going to be examples of where something may have not been implemented properly or, yeah, was weird, like the segregating the kids in the math class thing like you brought up. And all of that is fucked up. But I don't think that that's enough to just throw out the concept entirely, because there's also a way to implement that concept uh, accurately without it having the negative outcomes, at least as far as we can tell. Right. And, and I respect your, you know, opinion about that. Um, I think I just tend to focus more on, you know, a, you know, application mm -hmm. and what I've seen, what I've seen happen in the world hasn't been great. And due to that, that's why I feel the way I do. Doing with, with seeing the negative outcomes of some of these yeah, things? Seeing, uh, yeah, seeing how things have not turned out good <laughs> in some of the circumstances circumstances where, you know, schools have had a lot of freedom. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why for quite young kids, I think that it was better off that way. Um, but I just going feel back like that's not a very good way of, of judging whether or not the principle itself is good. Because, I mean, you could make this argument, I feel like in, in various different contexts where I don't think you would agree with it. I would need to think about it a little bit more. But like, how many times, for example, have we uh, implemented certain medical uh, treatments or whatever that we now look back on and we're like, that was fucked? Like when we used to put leeches on people or there have been all kinds of crazy things that have happened throughout the, the history of medicine. Still leeches sometimes. <laughs> they still, med leeches are sometimes still medically used. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I know. But they used to think it could like suck the disease out of the blood or something. But, like, we wouldn't throw away, then, the concept it, of... Infections, for infections, it does. They do sometimes still do that in certain circumstances. Okay, sure. Well, I mean, I can give you a, I can give you a different example. Then, like, there's... I'm, they used to lobotomize to... people or whatever. So, what I'm saying is, like, there have been multiple instances in which medical sort of things have been implemented badly and poorly... But I don't think we would be comfortable just kind of throwing out the concept of medicine or going to the doctor. And I feel like it's kind of the same thing. Like, just if something has a bad implementation or you can point to a few examples where this thing didn't go right, I don't think that means you just throw out everything because there's still an aspect right. of it that is right. Right. Like, like I said, I respect that we have a different opinion about it. That's just, you know, where I'm at. But if I, if you don't mind, I would like to kind of go back to DeSantis. And because some people do think that he has, some of his policies have been a little overarching. And one of the main reasons why I do like him and I do promote him so much, um, when I don't really know what your thoughts were on all of, you know, COVID going on, because I, we, you and I haven't been in contact with any of that. So I'd like to pivot the conversation a little bit if we can. But sure. one of the main reasons why I like DeSantis so much is that, you know, he was one of the first governors to stand up and, and say, like, look, like, I don't think that, you know, shutting people up in their houses like this is good. You know, here, we're going to open up. We're going to let people, you know, go about their business and do what they want. And, you know, if they want to wear a mask, cool. If they don't want to to they don't have to and he was for me um one of the people that was a leader in that um and letting people make their own decisions and that's one of the reasons why i like him so much um okay. i don't know during the all the covid's kind of stuff going on where where are you at with all of that well i just wanted to look this up right when you said that because i was curious um and if i'm not mistaken here chat correct me if i'm wrong here please 
But I think Florida had one of the highest daily average death rates as compared to the other states uh, per 100,000. There were a lot of numbers that came out initially. Um, and then once they relooked at the numbers, it was not the case. Uh, no, it, it, when all everything was said and done, they were able to analyze things. Um, places like New York um, and California had a much higher uh, death rate um, than Florida did, despite having such a large retirement and, you know, kind of elderly population there. Right. Well, I thought that there was a, there was also that weird scandal that happened in uh, in um. Sorry, I was trying to do this at the same time. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Florida didn't rank like at the top of the the death rates or whatever. It looks like the top one, at least here according to this chart, was Mississippi. Um, and then yeah, where Florida. I Mississippi unfortunately has quite poor health in general. That's where, um, unfortunately, I want to say that it might be Mississippi that is number one for obesity. Um, okay. They have a lot of a lot of, which is sad because it's you know there's a lot of wonderful people in that state. Um, I know yeah. some. Um, I mean, I understand the, the like, we want to live our lives freely kind of thing. Um, and I'm really not opposed to that, again, <laughs> in principle. Um, but as far as, like, the lockdowns and whatnot, I sort of mm -hmm. have, like, two conversations about it almost. Because it's, one, does the state have the right to do that? Which I think you and mm -hmm. I both would be in agreement that they do. And then the next they have a right to to do like lockdowns, vaccine mandates, uh, mandate social distancing. I don't agree with that. I mean, the state, e individual states have the right to do that. The federal government doesn't have the right to make a broad sweeping vaccine mandate across the board. But individual states do have the right to mandate vaccines. No, I don't. No, I don't agree with that. Well, no, I know, but I'm saying that like, according to the 10th I, Amendment, Federal government or a state government does that. That's where I'm. My, I'm telling you, I, my libertarian <laughs> is showing a little bit more. And when I do say libertarian, I, you know, came from a background of, you know, kind of being exposed to more uh, Tea Party Republicans, and that's kind of what background I have. And you know, kind of leaving people. But aren't Tea Party them. Republicans all about respecting the Constitution? Yes, they are, and that's, and it's a constitutional that's right given to the states that they can mandate these things. See, I would disagree. I think that it's taking away people's, you know, constitutional rights. And I don't think it matters if it's the federal government or the state government mandating these things. I don't think any government should have that much power. Well, no, it's it's that according to the 10th Amendment, it says that uh, powers not delegated to the federal government should be decided by the state. And I mean, I'm sure you've heard Massachusetts brought up a couple times because it was a, it was well over now, I think over 100 years ago. Yeah, where. Massachusetts ruled that they could enact a statewide vaccine mandate, or excuse me, the Supreme Court ruled that, and that was based mm -hmm. on the 10th Amendment. This is why I've been consistent on the federal government cannot do it because that is not a power that is given to them, but it is delegated mm -hmm. to the states. And I've heard a lot of people kind of take this way of like, well, they're, ta they're getting more power, but they were just using power they already had. So mm -hmm. it, it's constitutional. It's literally in line with the Constitution for states to, to mandate these things. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I remember when all of that did come up and I don't think that the Supreme Court made the right decision there. But what you're saying is, so do you think that the constitution is just incorrect on that part? I think things were misinterpreted. I mean, I you think can that there read are... the, the bill and it's, I just, uh, that's a bit of a, I, I feel like that's a direction you don't really want to go because you and I both don't know as much as Supreme Court justices. And it wasn't just one ruling in the past. There have been multiple rulings throughout the century in which they ruled that the state does, in fact, have the right to mandate vaccines. I mean, even George like, Washington himself, the founder of America, one of them at least, said that, uh, well, at least th what he had control over at the time was his army, and he mandated that they all get vaccinated, which at the time was different than what it is now. And he even had written in letters that if he could, he would make it so that kids would be vaccinated against their parents' will. So this has always been actually a part of American values in a way, because there's the positive and negative rights thing. There's like, how much rights, how many rights do you have to your freedom until your freedom 
conflicts with other people's rights. Right. Um, yeah, I, I get I get where you're coming from. And just because uh, things have been done in the past doesn't mean I agree with them. And don't oh, no. I, I don't think that. that and I don't think I, I'm not appealing to just be. Well, we've always done it this way. It's more like this has been ruled on time and time again. There seems to be a consistent pattern here that for the people who are the experts on the Constitution and the law are consistently ruling that, yes, states have the right to do this. The federal government does not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just feel like that's a I mean, I, I don't know. That's the thing is like a lot of Tea Party conservative types are really pro Constitution until the Constitution allows for something that they don't like. Right. And I think that it is important that we have the Constitution. Is it a hundred and, you know, percent completely perfect? No. But um, it is still important to me that, you know, that we focus on that because, you know, that is what's been, you know, one of our you know main guiding things for a long time. But I guess in terms of all of this, um, it's felt like a lot of governments were overstepping their bounds. And that's probably what I take issue with the most. Sure. Um, and. But I, the thing is, it's like, how are they overstepping their bounds if within the bounds that are given to them is that mm -hmm. they can do this thing? Well, I think it may and maybe it's not something that is in law, but maybe it should be that, you know, as Americans, you know, we have the right to, you know, uh, what is it? Liber you know, freedom, liberty and happiness. You know, we can pursue mm -hmm. those things. Um, right. And anything gets in the way of that um we we run into a problem i i feel like that's too broad i agree what you mean generally speaking um and it, i also it, and, and not everyone ag agrees with what things violate that and are getting in the way of that it absolutely is it also and, could you say that last part again and where i think it is personally but i know that you know that's probably different from a lot of other people well, the thing is, is that you're right that generally speaking, the government should do uh, very little to try and get in the way of people's personal liberties. Um, and I also mm -hmm. appreciate that you are consistent on this issue when it comes to like gay people getting married, too, because I, I know that you would be against, say, a state outlawing gay people from getting married because that, too, would be infringing then on their liberties. But Absolutely. there's there's also the conversation to be had that like. If your liberty infringes on someone else's liberty, then what do you do? And this is why a lot of the times these conversations, I like to bring up the drunk driving example because it's your body. You're choosing to consume something. It's also your property because it's your vehicle. But if we were to grant that liberty to drive intoxicated, you run the risk then of compromising other people's liberty to drive mm -hmm. safely to work or pick up their kids or whatnot. So there is – Definitely right. some restrictions on liberty at times. Right. And there has to be. Um, I had a college professor um, that I respect quite a bit um, mm. that he one time pointed out. Um, this is probably one of the bigger political shifts. I mean, it's significant. But what he said was that he's like, if you get too far in any direction on the political compass. You're, um, um, you're, you're kind of roboting there for a second. You're like, you're. <laughs> Your video is kind of breaking oh. up and let's see. H how's it? Is it any It's better? still doing it now. If you want, we can just turn off video from here because sometimes video really glitches it out. Oh, but I like, I like my, vi my face being there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think it's okay now. Go ahead. If you just is it, repeat. Is it... Yeah, it seems to be. I also, I don't know why, like when I talk, it like suddenly cuts you out. I don't like that. And I, did not do that intentionally. So I'm going to see if I can fix that too. Um, but yeah, if you wouldn't okay. mind just repeating oh. that last part. <laughs> no. Um, and I do appreciate that you haven't been too nasty with me. <laughs> I not figure yet. we're old friends. I'm like, people were like, they're like Courtney, you know, so, so, you know, Hunter can be kind of rough, you know, when he talks to people and I'm like, all right, I think it'll be all right. <laughs> it'll be okay. <laughs> so I yeah. do appreciate that. Um, let's see. What were we talking about? Uh, I brought up the drunk driving example, and then you said something about your professor, and then you mentioned one of your bigger oh, shifts. Yes. Um, so um, this is a history professor that I had um, in college that I respected quite a bit. And this is one of the main political shifts that I had in any ideology that I had, um, which still really isn't that big of a shift, but it was significant for me. 
um, is that he pointed out that, you know, if you get too far in any one direction on the political compass, you've gotten to a place um, where society is not going to thrive. Hmm. Um, and that's really significant. Um, and it's the reason why when I have friends that are <laughs> more extreme than me and they're, you know, start pushing too far in one of the directions, I'm like, whoa, you know, let's, <laughs> I'm throwing up my hands here a little bit. This is, we have gotten a little too far off of track because it, it doesn't matter. Cause you know, for the, I have a lot of friends that, you know, fall into that anarchist, uh, <laughs> freedom realm of things, you know, for them, um, you know, there is a time, like you said, with like the drunk driving and stuff that there is too much freedom, um, right. where it, people can get hurt because of it. I know a lot of people that, you know, they're, you know, if they're wanting to, you know, disband police and, you know, that's not good. Like that's not a world and society that at least, you know, me being a woman, I'm glad that I can call the police and they'll show up if somebody's trying to break into my house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, feel unsafe. I, I'm, I'm but glad that, that apply I apply to the vaccine stuff. Well, hold on. I'm not finished, but uh, when it comes to, you know, the freedoms, it's it's good that the anarchists can't go too far that direction. Um, in the same way, you have the Republicans, you know, and I think the neocons are kind of the ones that are getting pretty far off kilter, mm. um, where they want to use, you know, almost an authoritarian type model right. to tell people how, the, how they're supposed to live in their social issues, whether that being, you know, stuff to do with, you know, being gay or, um, you know, transsexual, mm -hmm. um, any of that they're pushing too much too. Um, but I think I can, I also see it happen on the left as well. And I see it as happening from the upper left quadrant um, of the, you know, political compass when they say, you know, hey, you know, we know this vaccine is brand new, but you need to go get it so that we're all protected. Um, when I think that it was, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people, and not everyone agrees with me, but I think that people did have good intentions. At least a lot of people did when there was going to be a vaccine coming out. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the actual product we ended up with ended up being one that's not very useful, not very effective. And I remember just some of the things that happened during COVID. It's just, it blows my mind. Like, I remember that. You're triggering um, me I right was, now. <laughs> I believe that it was Michigan. Sorry, uh, I believe that it was Michigan um, that people could go to Walmart and, you know, buy, you know, their groceries and stuff. But they literally like put tape around the section that sold seeds and said gardening is not essential. <laughs> You're not allowed to buy gardening supplies, despite the fact that they're already in the store. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that is what really worries me. Um, and I see a lot of the, you know, the vaccine mandates are these overarching things where it's like, hey, you have to do this. And, you know, I have friends that are even young that, you know, have had, you know, cancers and things like that. And, you know, medically from their doctor, they're like, no, you you really cannot get this vaccine. And the fact that they might be, you know, ostracized from society for, you know, for that is ridiculous. And uh, I also, too, um, like my dad, he when he his work told him that he had to get the vaccine, you know, uh, in order to stay working there. And, um, you know, he, you know, wasn't ready to retire yet or anything. And so he looked at it as something he had to do. And, um, unfortunately he was somebody that got myocarditis from taking the vaccine. Um, yeah, I think thankfully it's, it's just, covered, the, you know, it. but do you um, feel so like, did, so before we get into the e efficacy of yeah, sure. the vaccine stuff, um, cause I was one of the people who, called anti-vaxxers brain dead and all that shit. So that's why you're triggering me partially. Um, but don't you think, though, that the restriction of certain liberties for the protection of other people's liberties would apply specifically to the vaccine? So we do know for a fact that if you are vaccinated, especially when the vaccine first came out, obviously it's not as effective now against new variants, but again, nobody could prepare for new variants. They made a vaccine based on what variant was out at the time. Um, so we knew at least at the time, especially that it prevents you or, uh, let me rephrase significantly lowers your likelihood of getting COVID-19. So just that fact alone, because it lowers your likelihood of getting COVID, it also means then that it's lowering your likelihood of spreading COVID because you're not even getting it in the first place. And so isn't this kind of applicable here? Because if you're refusing the vaccine, you are then a 
risk to other people. And I'm not, I don't mean like refuse the vaccine because of medical reasons. There are, there are legitimate exceptions as to why you should um, not get the vaccine. Uh, my, my sister has like an issue with blood clots. She could not get the vaccine. And I never once got on her case for it because I'm like, you have a legitimate condition. It was more the people that were like yelling about like my freedom or the people who were like saying it was um, authoritarian for the businesses to require vaccines and shit like that, that I was more going after. But don't yeah. you feel like it would apply here? Because I mean, you're, you're compromising other people's liberty to live their lives freely uh, and you're compromising their right to not get sick, at least not deliberately. Yeah, it might be hard for us to reach a point with this just because, I mean, I think that there was a lot of stuff about the vaccine, even with, you know, if it helps you not spread it by having the vaccine, that I think they were wrong um, in what data they put out about that. Um, yeah, the transmission thing, just to cut in real quick, um, I know that's a really common one. Like, well, it didn't stop transmission. There's a couple things is that the most charitable interpretation of that is honestly that the results are mixed. However, mm -hmm. from what I've seen, there are more studies that have shown that when people are vaccinated, they can still spread the virus if they get the virus, but the uh, length of time that they're contagious is cut down and the viral load is also cut down. So it does reduce transmission. Of course, nothing is going to be 100%. And obviously we know that. But it does reduce transmission in that sense. And even if it didn't, like what I said a minute ago, if it lowers your likelihood of even getting it in the first place, on a statistical sense, that is also lowering transmission. Because if you have a large group of people that can't even get it or are less likely to get it, that group of people are then also less likely to spread it. Right. Um so I, yeah, I think that there was a lot of a lot of data there that's wrong, but um, but I, I think the the one of the issues here is that you know if you know they had done trials, if they had done studies and saw that there were no no negative effects of you know getting this thing, um, we might be having a little bit of a different conversation. Um, I'm triggered but again. I'm getting triggered again. There are, because there are a lot. Nothing is with 100%. Nothing is 100% though. And I know that you know that, Courtney. Like, it's not even 100% that the fucking Tylenol is going to work when I take my headache. It's not 100% with anything. So I feel like, or excuse me, the side effect thing too. That's part and parcel with any type of medical procedure. There are always going to be potential side effects. The question we should be asking is, do the side effects outweigh the benefits or vice versa. And we know that you're more likely to get myocarditis from COVID than you are from the vaccine. We also know that it's better to not be spreading a otherwise preventable disease. So I don't know what side effects there are that are suddenly outweighing the efficacy of getting the vaccine. Other than myocarditis, which in most cases is mild and, and gets better after a few days, what what negative side effect? I mean, there's there doesn't exist a single medication in the entire world that's without side effects, right? Right. Well, and I disagree with you on some of the specific examples that you gave, but I don't really care about arguing about that. Um, but what I'll say is that even as something as harmless as Tylenol, um, and there's some people that, you know, that they like Tylenol, they don't like Tylenol. I, if I have a headache, I take Tylenol. Mm -hmm. I, I, I take it the government telling me that I have to take Tylenol. Well, the thing is, is that a lot of it was the government saying in order to participate in certain elements of society, you would have right. to take this thing. So like, you know, back in the 60s when they were having an outbreak of, um, uh, what was the, it was some kind of a flu. I can't remember which one it was. It was some big outbreak of the flu. They literally had people going door to door, forcing people to get vaccinated. They would knock on their door, they'd come to the door and they would fucking force them to get vaccinated at their door. And so stuff like that, I would also say like, that is yikes. <laughs> What? Like, hold up. You're on someone else's property at that point. That's fucking out of bounds for sure. But mm -hmm. when the government says like, hey, in order to enter this space, you need to be uh, in a condition in which other people are not put at risk. I still don't see the problem with that because we do that even with way less worrisome things like the government, for example, restricts our right to walk around naked because it would make other people uncomfortable. That doesn't even necessarily do harm. But you still have to abide by certain rules in which some freedoms are restricted or there's certain uh, behaviors right. that are required from you in order to participate in that aspect of society. 
And I think that when you get into the medical decisions, that's where that's where it crosses a line. Um, Because there absolutely are things that, yep, we like people to wear clothes. We tell them, you know, they need to behave a certain way, you know, when, you know, going to certain, you know, venues and, you know, fair enough. But uh, when it comes to making medical decisions, um, I just don't think that that's the place of the government. Sure. And I mean, I I think that's one of the things that I just don't think we're going to uh, find common ground on because... The government is already involved in certain medical uh, procedures. I mean, look at the government's involvement in abortion, for example. So for the government to be involved as far as the state government saying, hey, if you want to go to this school, which I you're probably are you okay with vaccine mandates for like public school? I mean, no, (laughs) no, not at all. Really? Well, well, all right. I have a hard time with vaccine mandate being just across the board because yeah well and also all right put it put it this way too vaccine mandates without exceptions um that's also a big issue because it it is a lot different if we're talking about a covid vaccine versus if we're talking about a measles vaccine because i know that most school uh you know districts do require you know i think um some I think you know, measles, vaccines. polio, like hepatitis, I think, stuff like right. stuff like that. Things that they've acquired for quite a while. Um, but the difference there is that the mRNA technology is better and more effective. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean... I, I liken the... The technology is different either way, but the, I liken a COVID shot more similar to like a flu vaccine because we're not dealing with something like... When you're talking about measles or polio or something like that, you're not talking about something that is rapidly changing and there's like a new version every, you know, every few months. But isn't um, that, that's kind of more of an argument to why you should should get the vaccine, right? Well, I don't think so. Because, I mean, we don't require the flu shot. We don't require the flu shot. But the for, flu, it doesn't you know, kill people at the same rate and is also not nearly as contagious. COVID is a lot more contagious than the flu, but the flu does kill quite a few people it every kills, year. It kills, but it, yeah, I know, and it's it's sad, but it does not kill nearly to the same extent, especially when COVID was first happening. Uh, you could look at the death rates. Are, ...are closer together than you might. It's, it, it is worse. I, I, it absolutely, COVID is worse than the regular, you know, influenza, um, but the numbers, it's not like 10 times more people are dying. Um, I believe it may might be two point seven. I'm just looking at it from um, that's CDC. What, I want to because uh, I, I don't know the exact number either. Uh, um, when the when the actual numbers came out, um, and there also, of course, is you know discussion on if you can trust the numbers. But even the numbers that did come out, um, it's not. Uh, there's a lot of people that die every year, regardless of you know whether there's COVID in the world or not. I mean, this um, kind of clears and- it up, though, is that, well, for OK, the numbers were accurate, as accurate as they could be. But it says compared to flu, COVID-19 can cause more serious illness in some people. COVID can also take longer before people show symptoms and people can remain contagious for longer periods of time. So even that alone is like that. Therefore, if you're contagious for a longer amount of time, then you're able to spread it to more people that would potentially die. COVID killed my grandfather. So it happens like all, right. all the time. It's okay. He he was also old and he got other diseases that sort of came along with the COVID and, and everything else. But um, the, just the fact that you're contagious for longer means that you have right. the potential to spread it to more people, meaning then that you obviously are, are, are raising the likelihood that one of those people that get it are either going to die from it or then maybe they'll spread it to someone who will die from it. So COVID is definitely more severe than the flu and requiring a vaccine again Like you have the right to remain home and not get the vaccine. You have the right to drive your car and not be vaccinated or whatever. But if it's like you want to enter a private business, private businesses have a right to require vaccine. Or if you're going to go to a public school, which is literally government funded, they have a right to set in line certain rules that, hey, you can't put other kids at risk uh, or the teachers at risk or their grandparents at risk. If you're going to attend our government funded school. And I think that all of that is completely reasonable. Well, the thing is, we haven't seen schools are a little bit different. Schools are a little bit different. Um, but in terms of businesses, 
it would be very unusual for there to be any other kind of um, medical stipulations that you need to go somewhere. Because I know that it is important to you that, you know, people not be ostracized that are different from each other. Um, you know, I know that that well, is a pack. Different for immutable characteristics. If somebody's ostracized because, like, they're a dumb fuck who's too scared of the vaccine, then so be it. I'm fine ostracizing people. I have a problem ostracizing people on the basis of certain characteristics. Okay, so it's not a, not across the board for... No, of course see, not. For I'm, me, I'm in favor of ostracizing, me. say, a neo-Nazi. If someone came out and was hailing Hitler and talking about how Jews are all ruining the world, then I would be okay ostracizing that person because it's not an immutable characteristic to be a Nazi or to not want to get the vaccine. All right. And can a business tell tell someone who is a Nazi that they can't shop at that store? Um, could a business tell like a open. Nazi that they couldn't shop at the store? Like if they're if not, they're not openly harassing anybody, but that's just who they are. You know, they mm. are a Nazi. They have these beliefs. They want to go in and buy a sandwich. Can a business tell them that they can't? Yes. And that's because businesses have the right to deny service to people so long as the denial of service is not a violation of an otherwise uh, pre-existing law like the civil rights law. This is why a business has the right to say, we're not going to make you the cake that says hail Hitler, but – Mm -hmm. And they're allowed to do that, but they're not really, or I don't think they should be allowed to say, we're not going to make you this cake because we don't f like gay people. Because now you've crossed a line into this immutable characteristic is the reason behind my refusal to serve you. And then you get into yikesy territory. I don't think people should be kicked out of a store for being white or being black or any kind of immutable characteristic. And I, and I know that I know the cake issue that you're referencing. Um, yeah. If, if they just want to go into the store and they're not, you know, customizing anything or doing if they just want to go into a store and like buy a pre-made sandwich that's made and pay for it and leave. Like, is there is there anything that would. And so you're saying that there are certain people that it would be fine for a business to say, nope, you can't buy that from us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've seen businesses with the big signs, right? Like we have the right to deny service to anyone for any reason. But that any reason clause cannot mm -hmm. violate an immutable characteristic. Again, a business wouldn't be able to say, we're not going to make you a wedding cake because we don't like interracial couples. Mm -hmm. Like they, you couldn't do that. Then at that point, you're not, you're not invoking your right to deny service. You're now in, uh, violating, arguably, somebody else's liberty on the basis of their immutable characteristics. This is why I'm okay with businesses saying, no, you need to leave because you didn't get vaccinated. But I'm not okay with businesses saying you need to leave because you're gay or white or black. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. I definitely fall into the camp of I'm like, you know, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be mean to mean to anybody. I don't know. I, I have a lot of heart for people that are, you know, being ostracized, even ones that are different from me, even if I don't agree with what things, you know, that they, you know, are that I still think I want to afford them as many freedoms as we can. Um, yeah, I, but I, but it, uh, if, af if affording them, them, their freedom comes at the cost of compromising other people's freedom, then I have a problem. You and I are on the same page that people should not have the right to drive drunk, right? Correct. Right. And there are a lot of people who have driven drunk and they're fine. I literally have friends who have, who have like, they're like, yeah, I've driven drunk like five times and I've been, I'm fine. It's not a guarantee right. that they're going to kill somebody. But it's still the fact that you're risking someone else's well-being for your own pleasure, for your own liberty in that case, that mm -hmm. we restrict it. And I don't know why this couldn't apply to the vaccine because similarly, you are choosing what to do with your body by putting something into it as far as alcohol. Why should you not be allowed to operate your property after you've made that choice about your body? But we agree because it risks other people's well-being and I want to have the right to drive my kids to daycare safely without some jackass cramming in or ramming into me because he's got too tipsy or whatever. <laughs> but it just, I feel like this just falls apart then with the vaccine thing because it's like, okay, I also then should have the right to walk around in the public square or go to the grocery store with my child and not run the risk that I'm going to get some kind of an illness that's either going to uh, kill me or kill someone else close to me or at least leave long-term lingering negative side effects because someone else just didn't want to get the vaccine. All right. 
Right. And I think it, it all it all probably stems from how we feel about this individual vaccine itself. I obviously have, you know, uh, a lot of suspicions about it. And I also just don't like big pharma as a whole. And I think that they don't look out for um, people's health and safety in general. And that that really stems a lot of where this comes from. But well, that's I do why we appreciate- have this. I mean, that's why we have the system in place, which you're right, like, Big Pharma, what is their biggest interest? To make medicine and make money. What is the FDA's interest? To make sure that these medications are in line with certain standards and guidelines to to the best of their abilities ensure that this medication is safe for the most part. So right. we and like, I, and would you be okay hypothetically if a business uh, was requiring a different vaccine, one that you were more comfortable with, like say the measles vaccine, if they're like, oh, we don't want you to come into our sandwich shop because, you know, you could spread the measles and you didn't get your vaccine. Like, would that be okay? Is this, is it the principle or is it specifically the COVID vaccine that you have an issue with? I think there's issues that I have with both. I think there's issues that I have with both. Yeah. Um, Like I said, I know that there's schools that you do require certain things. And look, like, I'll be the first to say that you know, somebody who is afraid to give their, you know, kid a measles shot, I think they are a dumbass. But mm-hmm. I think in a lot of regards, people have the right to do so um, and to be like that. Well, yeah, um, and they do, but they still have the right but, to not get the COVID vaccine. But they might face consequences for invoking their right to not get the vaccine. And then we go right back to the same thing. That's because other people, the business, has a right to protect their other employees from getting sick. The public square or even the government, state government, has uh, the right, according to the Constitution, to ensure that public health and public safety is not being compromised by someone else's freedom. And so, like, if like I said, if you want to stay in your car or like go through a McDonald's drive through or hang out at home, you're not going to be forced to get vaccinated. But if you want to participate in certain elements of society, other people's freedoms and liberties shouldn't be compromised because of someone else's liberties. Yeah. I think in terms of health stuff, like we're, I know we're not going to agree on this. I know that neither one of us is going to, you know, kind of come back from where we are. Um, and there are some other things I would like to ask you before we uh, kind of wrap up here. Yeah, I'm going to have to start uh, wrapping up too. So that's a, it's good timing. Yeah, but uh, well, anyways, yeah, we there's a, a lot of different things that we think about that. But I think ultimately it goes back to, to for me feeling that there are certain freedoms that people should have. And to me, there was a lot of people with this particular issue that, you know, were hurt by a system that um, thought that the vaccine was better than it was. Um, And I was someone who wanted it to be good. I, I didn't want, I don't obviously didn't want anybody to have bad reactions to it. Like my grandparents, they got it because they, you know, were more concerned about it. But for a lot of younger people, the, you know, the virus didn't end up being as serious and deadly as we suspect that it maybe was going to be. Um, and so then I, but it's, we don't just measure it on based on whether or not you die. Right. So if like younger people are getting the virus and maybe for them, it's pretty mild, but then they spread it to somebody else who's at risk or even immune and compromised and is not able to get a vaccine for a medical reason, then you're back to square one where more and more and more uh, people are catching this shit and spreading it. So like even that is like, yeah, similarly, like with seatbelts, like we wouldn't say like, well, they didn't die from a car accident because there's more like dying is the worst thing that can happen. It's more about just taking preventative actions so that your overall well-being isn't compromised. Well, and I think the other aspect that comes into play here is, you know, people's individual health and that, you know, your health, like you're not required to do anything for your individual health, like in, in America, for the most part, like if you, you can choose whether or not you exercise, you can choose whether or not you eat, you know, you eat healthy or if you eat too much for the most part, you know, people are free to do what they want. But with that, and I'm not saying that, you know, there are some people that have true immune issues and my our heart goes out to them that they, you know, just have things that they can't control. Right. Um, but for a lot of people, majority of the people that were having complications from COVID, a lot of them, you know, there's an evolutionary biology, you know, uh, aspect of that, that, you know, if you are, you know, not in good health in general, um, you know, whether that be, you know, due to age, whether that be due to, you know, you're not, you know, prioritizing your health, mm-hmm. um, 
that sometimes that means that, yeah, maybe you aren't going to live as long. And I don't think that there's a, it makes sense for society to bend over backwards. Um, we do this all the time, though, for people. I mean, if someone's in poor health because they have cancer, as opposed to someone who's in poor health because they like to go to Dunkin' Donuts every day, doesn't mean that they should just have their lives cut short um, because someone else doesn't want to get a vaccine. I, I mean, if anything, like there's so many people that have medical conditions that would make it worse for them to get the virus that it's sort of like, well, are we going to be like, OK, it's OK if the fat people get it and die, but it's not OK if the cancer patients get it and die, because obviously that would be bad. But like then you get into the other nitty gritty. Well, why are they fat? Is it genuinely because they're just like lazy and like to eat McDonald's all day? Or, or do they have thyroid issues? Are there other kind of even depression can sometimes lead to uh, issues with weight gain and weight loss? And so stuff like that is like I, I almost feel like that's just sort of like, well, circle of life, LOL. But like we can take steps to all to better all of society. I mean. If we have right. nearly, I mean, I'm pretty sure we have had over a million deaths now in the country um, due to COVID. And well, and my thing is this, um, but that hurt, I, I all, hear, all I was going to say really quick is that that hurts everybody. When you lose a large portion of your society, that literally like even on this most basic level, that negatively impacts the economy. That fucks me over. That fucks you over. That screws up everybody else. And that's why it's in ultimately our best interest to look out for the bare minimum of other people's needs. Yeah, well, and I think that, you know, for a lot of the people, for, for the ones that maybe, you know, um, they're, they, are, they are concerned that their immune system, you know, would not be able to handle it, you know, my thought is that, you know, for them, you know, if they feel that it's, you know, more of a fear that being out and about, you know, that they might catch something, mm -hmm. um, that, they, they can decide if they want to, how much they want to go out and participate in society because, you know, it doesn't, like, even j just with COVID, like, COVID is just one, you know, thing that you can catch. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, with the immune issues, like, a cold could kill them, and it's quite unfortunate, but you, we can't stop the world because there's a cold going around. That's just well, not I, would, I agree realistic. with that, but it's because of the severity of COVID, especially with people who are older or people who are right. already in those risks. But why are, uh, my question is, why are you applying? Hold on, wait, That's because wait, because you're saying they, they can stay home if they want, if they're too worried about it. They're the person who has the condition who they didn't choose it. Why are they arguably the potential victim forced to take accountability, stay home if you don't want to get it? But then the people who are choosing, they're actively choosing to not get the vaccine largely due to misinformation then why do they take precedent over the health and safety of other people who can't make that choice? Because of natural selection. That's ridiculous. Because of natural selection? What does that mean? Like, by that logic, why don't we then allow people to drive drunk? It's natural selection. Uh, <laughs> I mean, by that logic, what? we literally wouldn't protect people from virtually any disease or, or restrict any type of behavior. There are... There are I feel like we should take the warning labels off of. I mostly say that jokingly. Mostly. <laughs> take the warning labels off of what? But we should take the warning labels off of more things and let natural selection run its course sometimes, I think. <laughs> I think that that might sound most, kind of goofy, so but at the end of the day, that is literally going to hurt all of us. <laughs> no. With with drunk driving, look, I you know, I understand that 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 is one. <clears throat> all right, put how about this? I think that it that if you are on your own property, you know, you're not on public property, you're not on shared property, if you're just on your own property, that you can mostly do what you want if whatever is happening on your property isn't going to bleed over into other people's property. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's why I said if somebody doesn't want to get the vaccine, and because they don't want to get the vaccine, they also have accepted the fact that they are willing to stay home, or they're willing to, like I said, like go through a drive through instead of going into a building or something like that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, you have a right to do really whatever you want on your own property, so long as it's consensual. And I want to say legal, but I think it's fine for people to do like marijuana. And sometimes that's not legal. So uh, generally speaking, though, yeah, you have a right to do almost anything you want on your own property. Um, but that's why we're having the conversation about more broad society is because it's not mm -hmm. their property. Everybody has to go to the grocery store. And I don't know why mm -hmm. the weak people need to be essentially left 
out or kind of just like, well, we'll just let evolution take care of them. I mean, this is almost like might makes right or strength is therefore better because. And that's a really dangerous path to go down. I mean, how long until well, natural selection takes care of you and me? Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you hung out with your friend who smoked and then you got a problem because you inhaled secondhand smoke. Well, maybe you shouldn't have done that. Well, natural selection. Fuck it. Like, at what point do we draw the line, you know? Right. Well, and it's like, I know I'm going to die. Like, I'm not afraid of that. And I don't know if, you know, that, you know, makes a difference. But, you know, nature is going to run its course one way or the other. And the main reason why this particular issue is that, you know, and look, I, I know that you might disagree with, with me, but I think that there has been a lot more harm from people getting the vaccine and having adverse, you know, reactions to it versus um, people that caught COVID um, from somebody else um, because it was the person that wasn't vaccinated versus and then they and they were a vaccinated person. That's I'm, that's where that's I, we where would have I, to compare numbers on that. But well, right. That's the thing. Like you and I aren't going to agree on those numbers. But it's, um, and well, I, that's a, di a different I, conversation I don't want to get into. But I mean, a minute ago, you yeah. you said like you want to be accepting and you try to extend your heart to people and you also try to be nice in, in most cases. But like what you're saying right now is is like abhorrently mean, like you're saying it nicely. But what you're ultimately advocating for is some could even argue a form of eugenics, which is just let the weak die. Who cares if that weak person who dies is someone's mother or someone's loved one or someone who had a sickness due to none of their own control, maybe cancer or whatever. That's just not how our society functions, nor should it. Because again, the world benefits from a long living, healthy society with large amounts of people sharing a space, a further stimulating the economy and so on. This has trickle down benefits for us. And so what you're saying is like, it's arguably heartless because you're pretty much saying like, well, if you're sick or if you're weak for whatever reason, whether it's due to your choice or not, fuck it. That's evolution for you. And there's, well, that, there's it, gotta be a better way, right? It's not it, in my, you know, in my heart of who I am, it is not coming from a place of wanting to be mean to anybody. It's certain. I don't know if you think it is. No, I, um, I don't think you're trying to be mean. That's the thing though, is that what you're advocating for though is, is really mean. <laughs> it's just fuck the weak. Fuck the sick. Forget about them because that's natural selection. Like, why? What there are sometimes what weak people. Talking a lot. Let me address some of the things you've, you've said. Um, nature is cruel. Like the way of this world and, you know, that some people are, you know, born where their immune systems don't work very well. Um, it's nature that's cruel. No, but we stand up against nature as humans. We oh, fight on, back against on. the cruel aspects of nature. And you wait, no, you're you're literally advocating for nature to just run its nasty course no. when we have the ability to prevent that. Andrew, you're not letting me finish. Let stop talking over me, my gosh. So, and for those people that are, you know, at a disadvantage, that's why we have medications. That's why we have vaccines. That's why we're tr we, we tr try to do what we can to protect them. But my thing is, is that I think that there's a lot of people that get hurt from these overarching policies, um, specifically vaccine, COVID vaccine mandates. And that's, that's why, that's why it's not that I'm saying that people that want to make a, you know, health decision for themselves, you know, matter more than the people that are disabled. It's that I don't think it works. It's that I don't think it works. And I don't think that it is helping. That's the where it's coming from. vaccine mandates or just the vaccine in general? The vaccine itself, I don't think it's very effective at all. Uh, if, you know, if at all. But that's an empirical think... claim. Like that's literally not true. You can just read about studies as to how did it compare to people that didn't get the vaccine to and how I did... think wrong. And that's the thing. I think the studies are wrong. That's why it's not coming out of a place of being mean. It's that well, I think the Well, now it's study... coming out of a place of, of near conspiracy because there is not, it's not only like numbers here from America. There are numbers in like Danish scientists, for example, have explained how it is effective. What you're alleging now is that the entire world is involved in some kind of a, a conspiracy to lie about the effectiveness of a vaccine. Who makes the vaccines? 
and who tests the vaccines. It's these companies. That's that's who I think is, you know, has done a lot of people wrong um, in making them think that they're more protected than they are. It's, you know, you know, your big companies like your Pfizer's and your Moderna's. That's who I think um, has led people astray because they do are the ones that you know make their own studies. They're the ones that, and, and it's no, unfortunate. They don't. But no, 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 no. This is this is literally no. This is totally wrong. Some of them, you're right, are going to present the FDA with data saying like, "Hey, here's our study that shows it works." The FDA doesn't just the FDA doesn't just look at that and is like, "Okay, cool, you're good to go, buddy." I recommend you do a little bit more research because. It, it's been found there have been a lot of things that were FDA approved that were, were found to be very harmful. Uh, yes, That's but this is irrelevant. No, this is again of this is like almost this is very almost relevant. actually in, in in line with like an ad hom attack because now you're saying we can't trust the FDA. So therefore the vaccine can't be trusted because you don't trust the FDA again. Every institution has flaws. Every institution has arguably had scandals and no institution is going to get everything correct. But it's broader than this. If you want to say that you don't trust the FDA or Pfizer at all, I think you're wrong. But so what? We then have international data showing the vaccine is effective. There's a reason why, say, in Israel, people who were vaccinated as opposed to people that weren't not only fared way better when it came to COVID, they also were less likely to be hospitalized and have long term effects, which is another thing to consider. If you have hospital beds that are filled up from people who didn't want to get the vaccine for whatever reason, that is also compromising everybody else's well-being. Because now when my kid falls off her bike, I have a longer time to wait. Now, thankfully, it's not like this anymore, but it was like this for at least a, a good half of the, the year or so. Um, and now I have a problem. Now I have to wait longer. People were delayed getting their cancer treatments because of the influx of people that were sick. And so even if we knew, which we do know, that vaccine lowers the likelihood of going to the hospital, that is beneficial for everybody. And this is internationally demonstrated. So you don't even need to trust the FDA to recognize that the vaccine in and of itself is still effective. And that's that's where we disagree. We, we do disagree on that, you know. Oh. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of Israel, they um, had so much of their population vaccinated and they still saw quite high numbers of people getting sick and dying. No, um, and they saw a spike in people getting it. And they saw significantly lower rates of people going to the hospital. So they did have another influx because there was another um, uh, variant that came out. I think that was probably when Delta came out, which this how vi viruses work is they literally learn, quote unquote, to navigate the immunity. Um, but then what happened? They fared better. It was an outbreak. It didn't become another pandemic. They didn't have people flooding the hospitals again. There wasn't an uptick in massive uptick in deaths. And that was a demonstration that the vaccine is effective because it's more than just, did you get COVID? Did you not? It's also what happens when you get COVID or if you get COVID, excuse me, and they did better. So Israel just proves my point. I disagree. I disagree with you. Um, and I mean, we don't have anybody here, uh, to, you know, pull up numbers for us to, you know, go through or whatever. But I think we've, for the most part, gone through the issue and kind of stated how we feel about it. So, okay. Um, yeah, you said you had a couple more questions and then we could, we'd start wrapping it up. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious because I haven't, you know, been like close with you through this whole process, um, with how you went, how, why was it that you decided to switch your, you know, political ideology so much? Like, how did you, how did you end up making that shift and like what, what happened? What changed? Um, honestly, it's, it was like a very big combination of just life changes, um, that sort of. Is particularly when my daughter was born, since um, she was a uh, happy surprise. <laughs> um, it, it put me in a place of a lot of uncertainty, and I was not sure what I wanted to do. And at the time, I thought the better move was for uh, me and my now wife to actually split up um, and just raise, like co-parent, basically. Um, and I was like really, really confident that that was the right decision. And then when Rose was born... I was like, wait a minute, I was totally wrong. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I got a little thing wrong here, oopsies. No, I was like 100% incorrect. And then that just kind of put me in a place where I was like, if I'm like so wrong about something that I was certain, it wasn't like one day, I was certain for the entire the entirety of, of when my wife was pregnant that it was not a good idea for us to stick together, that this having a kid right now is just going to be fucking disastrous. 
um, a lot of negativity there. And then I was so wrong that I had to ask, like, I wonder if there's other things in my life that I'm really wrong about. And then that also combined with um, my exposure to a lot of a lot more stronger left leaning arguments than I I'd previously heard, to be honest. Um, I, I kind of was exposed to arguments that were outside of like, look at the funny blue haired feminist saying there's 5000 genders. Ha ha. And I started to like hear the arguments and the concepts and. From there, I mean, that was early 2019, and from there, it was a year-long process of, of re uh, introspection, and, and it wasn't until early 2020 when I posted my video that I'm officially leaving the right. But yeah, that, it was like a very big, long process. You'll hear people say all the time, oh, he's the guy that switched his politics overnight because he's a grifter, as if I'm, one, interested in making all the money, so that's why I killed my conservative channel. I don't know. Um... But yeah, no, it was a, it was a long process. It, it came with it came. It was a, just a long process. Her yeah. number would have been better off staying <laughs> staying conservative. That's for, what I've been uh, saying. You know. Yes, I'm like, how am I a grifter if I'm only interested in money? Why would I literally say I'm not a conservative anymore to my conservative audience? Like, what? That's the dumbest thing you would do if you're trying to make money. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Have have you has your audience changed quite a bit then from what it was before? Yeah, I mean, uh, people try to make fun of me too because I get a lot less views now on my channel than I used to. Um, but that's just kind of something like a, a sacrifice I was willing to make because of what I've always done is my, my channel doesn't exist for me to spread conservative views or to spread progressive views. My channel exists for me to talk about what I believe. And so yeah. it reached a point where like, even though my content that I was making before I announced that I left the right um, was mm. still more in line with my values because I was I was sort of like subtly transitioning my content a little bit too. Um, it was just starting to like kill me. I'm like, I don't like this. Like I, I need to be upfront about what I think and why I think this and I just want to be fucking done with it. I want to be out with it basically. Um, so just to be clear, I never was, it wasn't like I was making conservative content that I didn't agree with or whatever. It was, I would keep making content, but then I would sort of insert more progressive ideas that in a way that was more digestible for conservatives, which in hindsight, that probably would have been a better business model. Um, but that's just, that's, I, that's not how I roll. Like you see me, I'm, oh, I'm super loud and I can't shut the fuck up and I'm super aggressive. Like I can't do it that way. <laughs> so, yeah. And you always have been too. That's, that's one thing that hasn't changed at all. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> I even back when you, you know, you had a like really tiny YouTube channel um, when we knew each other originally, I was just like, oh yeah, like his, like I can watch some of your videos and then sometimes I'm like, okay, I've had enough. Like I can't deal <laughs> with the yelling and, uh, and how, and I, I don't know how much of uh, my Twitter content you've seen is that, um, I don't know, I probably have a very different style about, yeah. going, you know, that I, about than, than you do. Absolutely. Um, and that's what makes everybody on the internet and their, their sort of brand or whatever they want to call it. Like that's what makes it theirs is because it's your style. So yeah, literally I, I'm more in the minority. People don't usually, or don't want to get involved in the style of politics that I engage in the very hyper aggressive type. Um, but I uh -huh. just want to read this just really quickly that I did look up the Israel thing and it says this was in 2021 when they had the huge surge. And this is from NPR. So this isn't like some lefty cuck site. It's not CNN. OK, it says um, the good news is that among Israel's serious infections on Thursday of the week, according to health ministry data, the rate of serious cases among unvaccinated people over age 60 was nine times more than the rate among fully vaccinated people, the same category. And then when it came to unvaccinated people in the under 60 crowd, uh, the rate of serious cases was a little more than double the rate among vaccinated people in that age bracket. Right. So does that not demonstrate pretty clearly that the vaccine had a level of efficacy that went further than just, oh, I didn't get the virus. Even if you did get the virus, it made it so that it wasn't a super severe outbreak. Yeah. Well, you have to believe those numbers to... Uh uh you know to well, you know you have but think about what you're saying right now what do you think is genuinely what do you think is more believable that all of these countries i'm not talking about like individual states or like countries that ex areas that exist outside of the usa and the fda are all mm -hmm. coming to very similar conclusions which is that 
The vaccine appears to be effective, and even if you do have a breakthrough infection, it lowers the likelihood of you going to the hospital. That or they're all lying. Even countries that are at war with each other or at tr in trade wars right now with each other are agreeing on this. It's pretty easy, I think, to believe the numbers, yes, if the alternative is they're just all lying. Yeah. Do you know how many companies it was that actually produced uh, vaccines for this? Um, I mean, I know it was Pfizer, Moderna. I know there was a Russian one, like something or another. Um, then there was Johnson & Johnson. Um, so like four or five, maybe? Yeah. And so it, in my mind, they're the ones that were navigating a lot of this. Um, and so when, with you pulling in that there's other countries, and like I said, I kind of want, want us to move past this anyways, but I believe that it's the pharmaceutical companies, which are, you know, there's a couple. But they're not um, the ones dictating that, these numbers. The pharmaceutical companies are not involved in Israel's health ministry data. I mean, even earlier, we were talking about Florida's lower deaths. I mean, I, I could argue then maybe they're lying about the data because they want it to look better to not have lockdowns. But that would be silly because at that point you're like, OK, so is just is literally everybody lying is it that we trust this country and we trust the data produced from the country, particularly the FDA, not the pharmaceutical companies? Or is right. it that literally there is an international conspiracy to deceive everybody about the vaccine? And if that's the case, then what is the end goal of deceiving everybody about the vaccine? <laughs> we could that could be a long that could be a long conversation. <laughs> I understand. Well, I mean, but, I think we probably should wrap it up I have anyway. My, I have Oh, sorry. You totally uh, that, you froze up and broke concerns, up there. I, but I guess I did not hear a single thing you said there. I'm sorry. Could you say that again? Uh, am, am I back? Yeah, you're starting to. I'm going to just I, cut my video off for the I'm going to cut my video off for the end because you were cutting out a bit. Um, yeah, I think okay. you're good now. Go ahead. All right. Perfect. But um, I think that you know, we could to get to uh in this live stream but i do want to say that i appreciate you having me on quite a bit um is there any other just like one kind of final question for us to both kind of wrap up and see like what are where our futures are headed i know for me um you know i was never planning on you know getting the following that i do on twitter but i do look for the next uh you know few months and things for things to uh there's gonna be some fun stuff like i said there's some writing projects that i'm working on mm -hmm. um there are some that I'm working with. Um, it's finally moving into that stage where you know, you're starting to have uh, people reaching out to you that want to talk. So, which that's very exciting. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, what uh, what kind of what kind of do you see for your future? I know that I had seen you. I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but I did see when you got to briefly be on Timcast. Um, since that yeah. overlapped with don't, my, please don't watch that. <laughs> enjoy that experience. Huh? Your experience with uh, when you were on Timcast. I, I just wanted to know if you enjoyed that. No, that was probably one of my biggest career fails of uh, my career. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't do very well. Um, I think I went into it a little bit too confident and I just didn't have the uh, like rhetorical ability to um, to really like put up a fight at the time. Um, uh -huh. I mean, people still bring it up and they're like, hey, remember you got wrecked on Tim Pool? And I'm like, yeah, I remember now. Almost three years ago when that happened. Yes. Do you want to see any of my newer content now? Or, um, but was I was. Was it that long ago? Was it that long ago that you were on? It was at the end of 2020. Yeah. So maybe more oh, like huh. two, two years, two and a half years. But yeah, it, it was a long time ago now. But what I was just saying on stream is that I took that experience and really just tried to make the best out of it. So I dedicated myself to getting better at debate. And then all of 2021 and 2022, I've been doing debates. And that's probably why people said to you, like, Hunter can be pretty rough. Watch out. And that's because I am on some people. And, and I've gotten a lot more skilled, I think, with rhetoric uh, and just my mm -hmm. comfort levels at having conversations and talking about disagreements. And so there will be a time soon that I'm going to be um, um, asking to come back on the show to give me basically give me another chance no joke like and uh -huh. I, i'm planning on going on there being like yeah i did really poorly the first time but in a way I, i'm almost thankful for the experience because it showed me that i had a little too much ego there and it forced me to actually confront what i was doing wrong 
and get better at it. And I feel a lot more confident in my abilities now to have conversations and debates. So if you're interested in watching any of my content, go on my channel. You can go on like the debates playlist, watch something newer. <laughs> Don't watch the Tim Pool thing because it's it's not honestly at this point, it's not even a fair depiction of like me at this point. Like my style with rhetoric and the way I talk now is so radically different. I, It's like, why bother even watching it at that point? <laughs> Yeah, definitely as you uh, live and grow and learn things, uh, you definitely can gain a lot of skills. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, hey, that's part of life, though. But I don't know. It, it, it can be okay to have things not always turn out good. And I think that there's a lot to be, it can be learned from that. Uh, and there's there not any ever going to be a debate. That's what I was saying, too, is like, especially now that I do so many debates, I'm never going to get a 100% debate, there's always something that you can do better. And uh, it's also to be expected that with as many debates as I do, I'm not going to like dominate every debate. Like there's some debates, I just posted one where I was on the back foot and I was stumbling a little bit, but ultimately I still felt like I, I came out on top by the end. But like mm -hmm. that happens because when I'm doing multiple debates almost every day now, I am bound to get some that don't turn out that great. Like it's just going to happen. Right, right, yeah. The uh, I don't do, and I don't do much debating at all. Mm -hmm. I do more. I don't know. I do a lot more thinking and uh, analyzing yep. situations, and then you know, putting out what I what I feel after that's happened. But I would. I don't know. I'm not gonna say that I want to do more debate content necessarily. And honestly, if we hadn't have been friends, I probably wouldn't have done months. this uh, <laughs> to begin with. Well, um, my yeah, you probably would have looked at my channel and been like, oh no, this guy's gonna start yelling at me right away. Um, yeah. but yeah, well, I mean, either way, I do really appreciate you coming on and I'm glad we were able to catch up and kind of discuss our disagreements. And, uh, I also really appreciate that, um, you know, as strong as our disagreements are between us, we're still able to remain friends or whatever. You know, I'm not, I'll do my best to not start like digging up old tweets, trying to cancel you and then call you a Nazi uh, on Twitter since that's like the lefty way. But yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because um, they're actually not. It, I want to say it was in the last month, month or two months. It's been this summer at least. Mm -hmm. um, you hit like because I hadn't heard or seen anything from you in a while, and I think I even am still technically like subscribed to your YouTube channel from when I knew you all, you know, years and years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, it was um, like shoe on head. <laughs> it was I know you, you know exactly which one I'm talking about. The debate with her. Um, what's that? Was it the debate with her? No, 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 not the debate, but like it was a tweet just recently. Oh. Um, it was you with like it was about it was like transgender or something. No, it was about pedophilia. Oh, I yeah, fucking yeah. hate you on head. Yeah, her and I, her and I are mutuals. But um, oh, really? Okay, tell her I said fuck you, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> I, 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 won't, I, I won't literally know. hate her. Like she is actually one of the most brainless bimbos on on the planet. But cool. All right, that's uh, that's cool. Rough. Courtney's but, like, all right, I'm, uh, I'm out. <laughs> uh, but no, the. Uh, the, that that tweet that interaction though I almost I almost was gonna quote tweet it and say something and then I I pulled back and I'm like well I'm like Hunter and I were friends for so long I'm like nah I'm like I won't <laughs> <laughs> probably like, I, probably I, I smart because when I'm getting dogpiled I also tend to be really aggressive so but like I said thanks so much for coming on and um good luck with the the book and everything and if you ever want another time to come on here or even if you fucking see one of my videos and you're like oh my god I so disagree with that just let me know and you can come back on and we can we can chat another time Okay cool well thank again thank you for having me on um for anyone that wasn't here in the beginning um if you do want to find me over on Twitter um it is my name Courtney Nill that's uh, C O U R T N E Y K N I L L um I like to have fun over there. I make, I make a lot of jokes. I Half of my content is just making jokes and talking about life. And there's some politics sprinkled in, I would say. It's not uh, not as intense as Hunter's content. So if you want to just have fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, follow me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much again, Courtney. And have a good rest of your day. Thanks. You too, Hunter. Bye-bye. Bye. I see you guys seething and whining that I had the kid gloves on. I don't think I had the kid gloves. I think that I pushed back in a way that was how a friend would push back on another friend who they disagree with while also still giving the exact same arguments and explaining why I thought they were wrong. It just didn't involve me saying like chuckle fuck every minute. <laughs>